Welcome to the third section of Power BI Recipes, Share Your Nerdy Insights with Others, Developing Reports and Dashboards. In this section, we're going to dive into data visualization and report creation. In the first video, we're going to take a look at data visualization best practices, which is what we're going to dive into in the remainder of this video. Then we're going to look at report and dashboard layout best practices. The last two videos are going to consist of creating two different reports. The first report is going to be a sales analysis report, and the second report is going to be a project management report. In both of these cases, I'm going to show you how you can create a mobile view of these reports. So let's get started on data visualization best practices. Believe it or not, but good data viz really can make all the difference with engaging your audience and clearly communicating the data to them. While there is much that can be said about data visualization best practices, in this video, I'm only going to focus on a few key things. We're going to look at clearly and accurately labeling your visuals, using colors sparingly and purposefully, using light borders or no borders at all, and we're also going to look at some substitutes for these so-called dessert charts like pie and donut charts. Now, if you plan on being a Power BI user, and if you also develop data visualizations on other platforms, then I highly recommend to you these two books, Storytelling with Data by Cole Naflick and Good Charts by Scott Berenado. These books will teach you how to communicate your data truthfully and effectively and it'll keep your visuals from being another statistic of bad charts out there. Okay, so here we are in Power BI Desktop, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take you through a series of visuals, kind of comparing and contrasting between bad charts and good charts, and just kind of laying out the groundwork, the foundation for what makes good data visualization. Now this may be a common type of chart that you come across where you have dates along the axis and you have a column chart. The title and the legend is at the top and it's centered. And then you have a dark border. But this really isn't that intuitive of a chart. And the best way to demonstrate how this can be improved is to simply show you a different option. So let's go to the next page here. So here I have the exact same data just presented differently. When it comes to dealing with time series, it's actually preferred that you use a line chart because when you're dealing with dates, the dates are related one to another and you get that sense with a line chart because the individual data points are connected with each other. So we see that the previous date has some kind of relationship, some kind of influence upon the current date and so forth. Additionally, you'll notice that I moved the title and the legend from the center to the left. I left aligned the title and the legend. And this is actually preferable because when we first look at a visual or we first look at a page, our eyes typically go to the top left because that's how we read from left to right. And so I, I put the title and the legend where our eyes tend to focus. Lastly, you'll notice that while I did keep the border, I made it much lighter. That way it's not a dark, harsh line in the report. So this makes for a much cleaner visual than the column chart we saw previously. Let's go on to looking at a pie chart. So here we have a pie chart which shows the percent of sales by weekday. And this is fairly common. This kind of pie chart is something you see all over the place. However, the problem with pie charts is studies show that we don't really interpret area and arches very well. And when it comes to pie charts, what we're doing is we're relying on the area of the pies to interpret the data. 
And when it comes to donut charts, we're relying on arches to interpret the data. Additionally, we have a lot of slices here. Since this is sliced by weekday, we have seven slices. And so it gets kind of crowded and it's hard to kind of compare and contrast the slices amongst each other. So let's take a look at an alternative or a substitute to this pie chart. Okay, here we have a 100% stack bar chart. And this is much easier to read we can actually better interpret length than we can area. So when we're looking at a stacked bar chart here, we're looking at the length rather than the area. And this is a huge help in interpreting the data. Plus again, you'll notice I left aligned the title and the legend, and this just looks so much cleaner, so much neater than the pie, and it's much easier to interpret However, I don't want to completely rule out pie charts and donut charts. Now, some people will tell you never use them, but you will come across people who say, well, there can be benefit to them. And I'm one of those people who agrees that they can be used if done properly. So let's take a look at how we can properly use a pie chart or a donut chart. Okay, here we have some pie charts and donut charts, and there are three main things I want to briefly discuss here. The first is that uh, there aren't as many elements to the pie and donut charts. Remember in the previous one, we had seven slices or seven elements. Here, we only have three. And this is really where you wanna max out pies and donuts. If you go beyond three, then it just gets too cluttered and it gets too difficult to compare and contrast the elements within the pie or the donut. The second thing I want to point out is the color. Now the pie and the donut on the bottom utilize the default colors. When I fed in the data, this is just the color that was automatically utilized. And what I did at the top is I modified the colors to make it easier on the eyes and I use basically the same color but different shades and again I briefly discussed this before and in my opinion this just looks neater it looks cleaner it's not as hard on the eyes and the third and final thing that I want you to notice is the labeling on the bottom we have very minimal labeling we see small medium large as these are sales by order size and the labeling is not very large, so it's difficult to see. At the top, the labeling, the size is increased a little, and I not only include the order size, small, medium, and large, but I include the data values as well. So I have there the sales and then the percentages. So this makes it much easier to interpret the pie or the donut chart. Okay, here we have a combo chart. And you will find differences of opinion when it comes to combo charts. Some people will tell you never use them. Others will tell you, well, use them, but be careful how you use them. And with that being the case, I wanna show you two alternatives to combo charts. So that way you at least have some options out there. The first alternative is to simply create two line charts and to essentially stack them on top of each other. So here I have the sales uh, data at the top and the units at the bottom. And so by stacking them on top of each other this way, it makes it easier to uh, compare them with one another. The second alternative is to make use of this custom visual, which is a dual KPI visual that you can find in the custom visuals gallery for Power BI. So these are just two optional alternatives to the use of a combo chart. Okay, here we have the infamous spaghetti chart and it's called a spaghetti chart because well, it looks like spaghetti. And a line chart starts looking like spaghetti when you have five or more lines. So you wanna be cautious on the number of lines that are incorporated in your line charts. 
So let's look at a quick alternative of how we can improve this. Okay, so here we have our spaghetti chart, and at the top I included a slicer. So this will allow us to slice the line chart in order to minimize the number of lines in the visual. So I can look at Monday only, or Tuesday only, and so forth. Or let's say I want to look at the weekend. So Sunday, hold control, Saturday. So this allows us to have control over which days of the week or whatever your data is to have control over the number of lines in the line chart. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at one final important data visualization concept. And we are going to look at size and color. So when I came to this page, your eyes probably immediately went to the blue numbers right here, this column here. You probably completely ignored this column here. You might have quickly glanced at this one, but really your eyes were going here. And that's the power of size and color. This column here stands out more than this one because this column is bigger. The font size is larger. And this column here stands out more than this column because not only is the font size the same size, it's larger, but we utilize a bright blue, a colorful blue to capture the attention of the end user. However, you do want to be careful with how you use your color. So here you can see I have good, not bad, and distraction. And let me explain what I mean. This right here is the ideal scenario where you have, you use large font and a nice color to capture someone's attention, to focus on the data. And here, while this isn't bad, it is unnecessary. The border is somewhat of a distraction. We really don't need the blue border to capture their attention. The blue 84 does that well enough. And then here, this just ends up being a distraction because what happens is our eyes tend to focus more on the bright blue background than it does on the actual data, the 84 in this case. And so you want to be careful with how you use your color. Use it purposefully. Use it intentionally. Use it wisely. So that really summarizes key principles of data visualization best practices. Let's go ahead and quickly summarize everything we just looked at. The first thing is labels. Make sure that your charts are properly and clearly labeled. And typically, you want the titles and legends to be left aligned. Second, colors. Don't overuse colors. Too much color in a visual or a report can actually end up being a distraction from what really matters, and that's the data. So be purposeful and wise in your color choice. Thirdly, we looked at size and color for emphasis, and we could actually include using bold font here as well. And finally, we looked at some chart alternatives, specifically with pie charts and donut charts. So as you're creating visuals, a couple questions you may want to ask yourself is, is my visual cluttered? Is there any way that I can simplify this? So as you create your data visualizations, keep these best practices in mind. And as you do, you'll find that your visuals have a much greater impact on your audience. Well, in our next video, we're going to continue with this emphasis on best practices, but our focus will be on report and dashboard layout.